Hello and welcome to the Good Free Photos channel. Goodfreephotos.com where you can get over 20,000 free photos for your assignment or project. Goodfreephotos.com, please give it a link from your blog and mention it on social media to help me out a lot and help me bring you more photos and uh, more great videos uh, for content. Uh, today's topic is actually going to be uh, the lenses that are going to come with a Nikon mirrorless camera. Uh, we know that the Nikon mirrorless camera is going to have two models. It's going to be like a 26 megapixel one. Um, that's going to probably retail around the $2,500 area with a lens. Also, there's going to be a $4,000 model, which is the 45, 46 megapixel one. It's going to retail for around $4,000, and that also comes with a 24 to 70 f/4 lens. Now, there are going to be two other lenses. There's going to be a 50 millimeter prime f/1.8 and a wide-angle lens. It's also going to be 1.8, probably 24 millimeters could be 17, could be you know 32 or whatever and there's a rumored um, 52 millimeter f of 0.9 lens. Now Nikon, now this is the topic I want to discuss. Uh, Nikon has kind of announced that they're going to focus mainly on prime lenses, uh, the super high-end prime lenses first. Now I don't really, what do you think about that strategy? That's what I want to kind of get a consensus about. I don't really agree with that strategy because although I do use prime lenses, especially like my macro lens, the lenses I use most are like the 24 to 120. And I would use a 24 to 70 if I had it. And also like I have a 70 to 300 that I use a lot because those are generally all purpose. And the glass quality, while if you pick up the pixels, it may not be as good as the primes. Generally, when you look at a picture uh, on a screen or even if you do a printout, they're pretty good and it's very hard to tell the difference unless you really seriously examine and loop, which I'm gonna guess like 98% of us really don't. I do it every once in a while when I compare cameras, but generally when I'm looking at an image, I really can't tell that much of a difference. There, yes, if you look very closely, there is a sharpness difference between obviously the prime and uh, you know a zoom lens. And also the autofocus is much faster for a prime lens, obviously. But Realistically, for these kind of non-telephoto lenses, like the 50, the 24, um, generally like the autofocus for me does not really bother me. The speed, the difference in autofocus speed between like a 50 prime and like my 24 to 120, it doesn't really bother me. And that's because like generally what I want really fast autofocus speed is for shooting sports or wildlife to capture the moment. And I'm not going to use a 50 or a 24. Um, to really shoot those things. I'm going to be using like a 300 or more. So I, it's not that big of a deal for, in terms of like the faster AF speed for the ultra fast prime lenses. Now I know there's a, something to be said about the bokeh, but if you have actually shot with a Canon 1.2 or the Nikon 1.4, the bokeh is actually really nice at that point. And I, I know Leica fanboys like to cheer about their 0.9 uh, you know, lens, which Nikon is building one of, but I don't know if like that's folly or not because an 0.9 lens honestly has limited use for me. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but definitely has limited use for me in real life. It ha it's great for bragging rights and stuff, but at that depth of field on a full frame camera, any slight movement uh, from the subject will cause it to be out of focus, whether you're doing portraiture or you're trying to just photograph you know, a landscape, any slight movement in anything will cause, or any waver in your hand will cause your focus point to move out of focus. And that's because with such a shallow depth of field, um, generally the area that's in focus is very, very thin. Now I've done, I've uh, tried you know, the 1.2 from Canon, even at that depth of field, which is still quite a bit wider than uh, 0.9, even if your subject moves like you know, the width of a nickel, basically, the part that you want in focus is going to be out of focus. Generally on those lenses, I do stop it down a stop or two for better, uh, you know, kind of like, for better sharpness over the entire focal range. So I don't really know if like an F of 0 0.9, yes, with a bigger mount, Nikon can actually do it, but I don't know how much more useful that is going to be for me over let's say a 1.4 or like um, a 1.2 especially like a 1.2, right? I, I don't know if I'm going to be getting that much more functional use out of a 0.9 than I would be a 1.2. And I'm guessing the 0.9 is gonna be significantly more expensive than a 1.2 or a 
I personally think the bokeh from the 1.4 or the 1.2 is already really good. So I don't, I would probably not use the 0.9. I would definitely stop it down probably to 1.4 or 1.8 for use most of the time. Even in astrophotography, we're talking about a full frame camera. And I do want, you know, like, I actually do like the foreground and the stars kind of in focus. That's actually why I use a 2.8 prime instead of a 1.4 prime, which I actually have in my bag for astrophotography. Because in, on a full frame camera, uh, the sharpness is more important to me than noise reduction. And full frame cameras, I can just, one, I can just stack the images to reduce noise. Um, and two, like, like I said, the sharpness is more important to me. So generally, for portraiture, the subject has to be able to stay really still, and you have to get the focus pretty much exactly right on a um, 0 0.9 type of f-stop. And generally, like, I would find it hard to get both eyes in focus on 0 0.9, like, because they're a little bit apart, and if you focus on one, the other one's going to be slightly out of focus. And that's just the problem with, uh, you know, like, really, really fast f-stops. For me, like for practical use purposes, especially for the lower model, for consumers or prosumers, I would actually focus, if I were Nikon, I would actually focus on building like useful zoom lenses. I would get like a, before I get like a 0.9, 50 millimeter, 52 millimeter lens out, I would be sure that I have a 70 to 300 prime. I have a 24 to 120. That is like honestly one of the most useful lenses I have. Yes, I do shoot with a 2 to 500 more because I do wildlife. But whenever I travel out and I'm just doing travel photography, not wildlife, that's the lens I choose. Not because it's the sharpest lens I have in my toolbox, because some of my primes are a little sharper if you really look. And not because it has the best zoom range, because you can't shoot wildlife with 24 to 100, obviously, uh, 120. But because that gives me that zoom range that I can basically shoot most other things with. I've done a ton of landscapes, sunsets, and things like that with that lens. Basically everything besides wildlife and astrophotography I can do with that particular lens. So it's very, very useful. And I'm, I really wish like, yes, the 24 to 70 is basically good enough generally that they're launching with the camera. But the 24 to 120, um, it costs a little bit less, obviously. I think, well, I don't know if it's going to cost that much less. But it's just a little more useful because it does give you a little bit more zoom range. And the 70 to 300 is pretty indispensable. Um, because it's actually a small, like, regular size lens. It's not like my 2 to 500 was just like a giant bazooka lens, but I can actually carry around in my backpack as well when I go out without it being that heavy, and it gives me serious zoom range when I actually need to zoom stuff. Anything um, longer than 300 on a full-frame camera is going to be one of those giant bazooka lenses, which I can't carry when I'm biking around. So I think, I, I, if it were me, now I'm not like, you know, a Nikon strategist, but if it were me, Instead of these like ultra, like the really niche 0 0.952 millimeter lenses that are basically like a lot of bragging rights, honestly, I would definitely uh, focus on more like practical use zoom lenses for the broader market because you're going to sell probably a lot more of those units than you are going to sell like really expensive niche lenses. Like one of my friends does actually have the Canon 50 millimeter 1.2. But everyone else just buys the cheap one, 1 1.8, and most of the time it's good enough. And it's 125 bucks, or like me, I even bought the Yongno one, and the Yongno one for Canon is like $50. Yes, the 1.2, if you stop it down to 1.8, it is a little sharper if you really pick at the details. But for like casual photographers, or even like, you know, semi, like, uh, you know, like really enthusiasts, a lot of times it's really hard to tell unless you really focus in and actually examine. The bokeh is definitely better on the 1.2, I'll give you that. But going from 1.2 to 0.9, I'm not actually sure like how big of an advantage that is. And I like the practical use of it is actually what gets me because there's not that many times I would actually use a 0.9 uh, f-stop just because the part of the image that's in focus is really, really small. And I find a lot more use cases for like you know, a 24 to 120 or a 70 to 300 or even a 70 to 200 definitely than I would have like for an F of 0.9 prime 50 millimeters. So I really do think before Nikon, like it's okay to get one of those, like one or two of those really high, high end um, alt, uh, primes that are super fast out. But I think it's actually a better marketing strategy to get like the full zoom range out generally. So you have a 24 to 120, you have a 70 to 300, you have a 70 to 200, which are some of the most common zooms people buy. 
and like a 17 to 35, which is the common Astro one. Get those out first because you're going to sell a lot more of those because that covers all photographers. Whereas like a 50.9 is, like I said, kind of a very niche type of photographer that will buy that. And most people will just go for the 1.4 or the 1.8 because of the cost. All right, let me know what you think uh, about my theory that they should focus on the the more uh, usable range of, you know, basically covering from 14 or 17 to 300, get those zoom lenses out first, or do you think their strategy of getting ultra fast primes out for the niche market, niche categories are a better strategy for Nikon at, with the release of their um, new two models of mirrorless camera? All right, thank you and have a nice day.